Hi guys, so back with another drill press video. So I just got this drill press working and I'm getting it fixed up just so someone can use it. Uh, but I had an idea uh, after seeing some videos from some people that I follow on YouTube, uh, one of them being Mr. Pete 222 and he adds a counterbalance system to one of his large drill presses. Now this is obviously not large, but I think it could benefit from having a counterbalance on the drill press table because this does not have a rack and pinion to raise and lower the table. And I know you're limited to about that much movement, but various shop projects, sometimes you don't have a free hand to hold things and whatever. So had some ideas running through my head. And so this is what I did. So as you can see, table is stationary. I can push it down, it stays, raise it up a little bit. It stays, raise it all the way up, it stays. And so it basically stays wherever you put it. And so if I spin this, you can see back here, I've created a uh, homemade snatch block and a little pulley system with a weight inside of the column that will keep the table where I put it until I can lock it down with the clamp. But let me get you in a little closer and show you how I put together this little counterbalance system. Okay, so here at the back, I've got a homemade snatch block. And so I've just made the brackets of this snatch block out of some metal flashing uh, or ductwork material, um, really thin gauge sheet metal, but this only weighs four pounds and uh, my weight inside the column is two pounds. So we're, we're dealing with six pounds total here. Uh, this will hold up just fine. I just used a little piece of like poster board and just kind of sketched out what I wanted. Uh, you get a 10 millimeter hole at the bottom that the clamp bolt fits through. And then I kind of marked out where my bins were gonna be uh, offset just for the bearing and pulley in there. Uh, the pulley itself is a 608 uh, size bearing that I got out of a roller blade wheel. And then I 3D printed the little grooved pulley that presses onto the bearing. Uh, right now I'm just using some paracord or nylon rope. Um, this inner line is static line. It is fastened at the top. It runs down, goes back up, and then under the cover here. Right here I've made a little bearing support or pulley support out of just a piece of pine one by material. It's got the same pulley setup, a 3D printed pulley pressed onto a 608 bearing. I used the original spacers that I got out of the roller blade wheels for side supports on the bearing. And then this, I believe is just quarter by 20 volt that goes through it. So this is a little better look at the upper pulley mount. Um, this was pretty simple shape to cut out of a uh, one by three. I just kind of sketched things out. Um, I did countersink for the screws. I did have to get uh, a little bit longer screws. I was not able to use the stock screws here, but these all go into stock mounting locations. Um, I drilled a hole here and that just goes straight down into the column. And then there's a hole behind it um, that allows the ropes to come up through. Depending on how this rope holds up, I may switch this over to using some eighth inch cable, um, but I'll see how long this lasts. The static end of the rope, I've got it, it just comes up through this hole behind here. And then I um, cut a groove in the bottom underside of this wooden block at an angle so that my knot comes out over here and that knot keeps it from pulling, pulling through. And with the screws clamping down, it actually clamps that rope tight. So it works really well, uh, pretty happy with it. So for the weight that's down in the column, um, I just happen to have about a five or six inch long piece of inch and a half diameter steel DOM tubing uh, that had a pretty thick wall on it. I'm thinking probably like a three eighths inch thick wall. And that piece just happened to weigh two pounds, which was perfect. Uh, it came with a box of stuff that I got when I bought my lathe. And so I was just digging through and, and happened to find it. One of the other modifications I've done is just add this little magnetic base light. Um, it's got a little flexible neck on it, switch right here. And then you can see the white cord here. You would have to plug it into a separate outlet. I considered cutting this cord short and just splicing it into the existing wiring. But because this has a magnetic base on it, I figure it can be moved to another tool. Uh, this light, I got it from Amazon. It actually comes with these little uh, adhesive backed metal discs. So if you have a plastic sewing machine or something else that you need a little more light, you could add a base and move this from tool to tool. So I think that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll maybe uh, draw up some dimensions of this upper mount and even this match block. Let me know if you guys are interested in, in something like that. 
This same principle could be applied at a much larger scale to a you know full floor standing grill press. Just note that you do have to remove the upper head to do anything like this. So depending on the weight of your unit or how large it is, if you've got the means to get the top of your grill press off safely, something to consider. Um, but I think this is gonna be a very handy addition to this drill press. So if you like what I do, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.